Member statements. The member for Windsor West. Thank you, Speaker. Housing is a human right. Everyone in Ontario deserves a place to call home. People should be able to rent without the constant threat of eviction or bank-breaking above-guide rent increases, and purchasing a home should not be out of reach for hardworking families. Young professionals should be able to purchase a home in the community they were raised in. No one should ever find themselves without shelter. Housing costs in my riding have skyrocketed. First-time homebuyers are unable to get a foot in, into the market, with homes going for hundreds of thousands of dollars over asking price. The vacancy rate in Windsor-Essex is low, and rent prices have vastly increased over the last five, few years, leaving many renters without any options. Affordable housing and assisted living spaces have become challenging to find, with need far outstripping availability and wait lists ballooning. There are currently over 5,000 households waiting for housing in the city of Windsor alone. This government must fill the vacancies on the Landlord and Tenant Board to stop the delays that prevent Ontario renters and landlords from getting justice on critical issues from poor living conditions, problematic tenants, rent evictions, racism and discrimination. We need more affordable housing units across Windsor and the province to reduce the number of people experiencing homelessness and provide the money needed to properly renovate and repair the backlog of community housing that are in desperate need of work. As I said, Speaker, everyone in Ontario deserves a place to call home. Thank you very much. Member Statements. The member for Etobicoke Lakeshore. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Etobicoke Lakeshore is the home of the Ontario Food Terminal, which is the largest wholesale food and produce distribution centre in Canada and one of the biggest in North America. Due to the third wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, full of variants of concern, our government launched a mobile vaccination site to vaccinate employees and food supply workers at the Ontario Food Terminal. For one week in May, Unity Health, Community Health Partners and the provincial government held a crucial vaccination site. Almost 7,000 food and food supply essential workers were vaccinated at this site to help stop the spread of this deadly virus. I would like to thank our essential frontline workers at the food terminal and our local food producers throughout the community of Etobicoke Lakeshore for their hard work and dedication throughout the pandemic. I would also like to express my gratitude to Minister Jones and Minister Hardiman for assisting me in supporting this vaccination clinic in my riding. Furthermore, these pop-up clinics would not be possible without our health care heroes and volunteers, those who are helping keeping us all healthy and safe during such unprecedented times. I want to encourage everyone to get vaccinated. For those in my riding of South Etobicoke, our amazing community health partners are hosting a pop-up clinic today at the Fraser Institute of Humber College from 1 to 8 p.m., and that's at the corner of Kipling and Lakeshore. Please, if, you're not, if you have not received your first dose, stop by and get vaccinated today. Have an amazing summer, get vaccinated, look after one another, and stay safe. Thank you very much. Next, we have the member for London North Centre. Thank you, Speaker. This week, London lost a woman whose dynamism, principles, and commitment to social justice knew no bounds. Jane Bigelow, London's first female mayor, was an environmentalist, a staunch feminist, supporter of the arts and libraries, defender of the disadvantaged, and a proud new Democrat. Long before London's bike lanes, Jane was an avid cyclist and was often seen riding her bike to City Hall. Fittingly, part of the trail system she helped establish has been named in her honor. Known for taking a stand, Jane once famously refused a, a request from the office of Queen Elizabeth to wear a hat for the royal visit. When asked about it later, she cheekily replied, well, I don't always pay attention to instructions, and that was one I chose to ignore. Her children, Anne and David, remember her as a trailblazer, a visionary, someone who was well ahead of her time. I couldn't agree more. I was lucky to have received great advice from Jane and will always be so thankful for her kind words and support. Jane was driven by doing what was right, championing the underdog and challenging the status quo and inequity. She was tough as nails, passionate, and principled. She helped so many and will be missed by all. On behalf of the member from London Fanshawe, London West, and the entire ONDP caucus together, I'd like to send deepest condolences to Anne, Joanne, David and David, Ian and Ryan. Rest in peace, Jane. Thank you. The member for Scarborough Rouge Park. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am pleased to rise in the House this morning to recognize an outstanding community leader 
from a riding of Scarborough Rouge Park. Girmala Prasad is a leader who recently celebrated 35 years anniversary as the executive director of Malvern Family Resource Center. Girmala started Malvern Family Resource Center with two employees in a rented space. Her hard work for 35 years was rewarded with the state-of-the-art facility with over 65 staff operating and servicing thousands of residents in Scarborough. Grinmala has been a strong pillar of support for the group, helping grow the organization in tandem with the community and developing an agency with a reputation of integrity and well-known quality programs and a staff roster of qualified and dedicated personnel. Even with the challenges of COVID-19 pandemic, Malvern Family Resource Center recently launched a unique program in Scarborough, an urban farm creating space for 15 new farmers in my riding of Scarborough Rouge Park. For all these years, Grimala has been there for her community on a daily basis. I'm proud to be representing a riding that has dedicated community leaders like Grimala. Thank you, Grimala, for your service and for being a role model for the next generations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Member statements, the member for Brampton East. Thank you, Speaker. In June 1984, as six across Punjab attended Gurdwaras to commemorate the sacrifice of our fifth guru, the Indian government launched a military invasion into the Harmandar Sahib complex and to more than 40 other Gurdwaras across Punjab. Under a complete media blackout, countless Sikhs were murdered. Now imagine if you heard that Mecca was being attacked by an army during Eid or that the Vatican was being invaded during Christmas. That is precisely what the Indian government did to the Sikh community. The Harmandar Sahib, known as the Golden Temple, is one of our most central Sikh institutions. And the Indian government chose to invade this sacred place when it was at its fullest. But that was the point. The Indian government wanted to break the spirit of the Sikh people, to teach us a lesson for standing up for our rights and the rights of other oppressed people. But despite the untold number of Sikhs murdered by the Indian government, they could never break our indomitable spirit. And that's why today, 37 years later, Sikh workers, farmers, and activists alongside other oppressed communities are once again raising their voice, fighting for their rights, standing against unjust farm bills because we will never stop fighting for justice, we will never forget the Sikh genocide, and we will never forget 1984. Thank you, Speaker. Thank you. Member statements. The member for Ottawa, Vanier. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I would like to take a moment this morning to recognize June as ALS Awareness Month. ALS stands for amyotrophic lateral sclerosis and is also known as Lou Gehrig's disease. In my writing of Ottawa Vanier, we have lost a community representative to this disease. For over two decades, Maurice Bélanger was a fierce advocate for Ottawa Vanier as a member of parliament. He was, among other things, a strong advocate for the rights of Franco-Ontarians. He served our community with passion and dedication until the very end of his life. He made history when he used a voice generator in the House of Commons to introduce his bill. ALS is a terrible disease for which there is no cure. That is why research is imperative. On June 20th, the walk to end ALS will be held to raise funds for research and to, to provide support services to individuals and families living with the disease. During ALS Awareness Month, my thoughts are with those who have lost, we have lost to this disease. By wishing everyone working in the Ontario Legislature a really nice summer. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Next, we have the member for Mississauga, Aaron Mills. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Our vaccination rollout numbers reached record numbers in Ontario. We have administrated over 9 million vaccine doses, with over a million of those doses in just eight days. This week, we will, appro approaching, we will be approaching 75% of the adults' population having received at least one dose. In the last two weeks, three Bobop vaccine clinics opened in Mississauga. 
one in the Canadian Coptic Centre CCC. Thanks for Father Angelus, our historic community leader and his team. One in the uh, Muslim Association of Canada, MAC, and the third in the Muslim Nexus neighborhood, MNN. These Bobop clinics help us encourage and promote, promote vaccination to different culture and ethnic communi communities. Mr. Speaker, I'm glad to say that Bobop clinics in Mississauga were very successful. As Beale was a hotspot, we needed multi-level strategy to ac ac accelerate our vaccination levels. Mass vaccination clinics, pharmacies, and Bobop clinics. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, we did it. As supply from federal government increase, we have been able to ramp up our vaccination levels to where they should have been since the beginning. We have seen our case numbers significantly decrease from sh a shocking around 1,000 cases per day to more manageable 168 cases yesterday. I would like to take the opportunity to thank each and every one of our frontline workers, doctors, pharmacists, nurses, paramedics, and also I want to thank the constituents in Mississauga and Mills for their patience during these hard times. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. Next, we have the member for Hamilton Mountain. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. On Monday, the Ontario Construction Consortium launched a campaign to draw attention to the opioid addiction and overdose crisis in our province. They're raising the alarm because work in the construction industry are being hit hard by this public health emergency. According to the Ontario Drug Policy Research Network's latest report, there was a 60 per cent increase in overdose deaths in 2020 compared to 2019. That means that 2,500 Ontarians died in 2020 due to overdoses. Of the victims who were employed, 30 per cent of them were construction workers. That's a very alarming number. This public health crisis has impacted so many families in this province, and they are demanding action from this government. But this government seems intent on ignoring this crisis. Why else would they have stopped the work of Ontario's Emergency Opioid Task Force, which has not met since 2018? In 2019, this government even reduced the number of overdose pre prevention sites in Ontario. When I speak with the experts and advocates about overdose crisis, they all tell me the same things. We need more consumption and treatment sites, more harm reduction and safe supply initiatives, and better supportive housing. Overall, experts agree that we need action, not continued indifference from this government. Thank you. Thank you. Member for Richmond Hill. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today to express my appreciation to the staff, nurses, and PSWs serving in the Ontario's long-term care homes. Yesterday, my husband visited my mother-in-law in person at her long-term care home. She is healthy and happy. Prior to the pandemic, we almost lost her to pneumonia. During this difficult time, she received the care she needed and recovered from her illness because of the care from the long-term care. She is also fully protected and cared for during the pandemic. Speaker, I just want to say that it had not been easy for us not seeing a mother, especially during the pandemic time. But we understand the importance of not spreading the virus to our mother and other seniors. We see that we have been arranged with meetings, online meetings and window visits during this tough time. And the love and care for our mother during this difficult time is a big relief for us because we know that she is being cared for. Too often, we focus on the, on the negative events that have ha occurred in the, in the long-term care during the course of the pandemic, but we must also acknowledge and appreciate all that was done to many long-term care homes, and we thank you for all of them for the love and support. Thank you. Member Statements. The member for mississauga Malton. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as you know, I have a daughter in grade 10, Suvidi Anand, 
who was looking forward to going back to school. Yesterday, I had to face her and let her know that this was one of the toughest decisions we have ever made. I know how tough COVID has been on our youth for the last 14 months. We here in our uh, QP, we all thank the parents and the teachers across Ontario for keeping our kids safe and engaged. Above all, I want to thank the students for their patience, hard work, and resilience. Due to the presence of the highly transmissible, deadlier, unpredictable Delta variant, we need to be extremely cautious. Yesterday morning, Peel Region's Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Lowe, said that the Delta variant would be the dominant variant at, by the end of this month, and we need to protect the health and well-being of our communities. Mr. Speaker, this will also help the province to ensure other activities vital to kids' mental health, such as day camps, outdoor pools, sports training, can go forward during step one of the reopening. I want to say congratulations to the graduating class of 2021. I'm also happy to share that our graduating students can have outdoor COVID-safe celebration of their important milestone. I'm confident that with more teachers and children fully vaccinated, we will have a happy, active, and new normal summer and a safe return to schools this September. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much. That concludes our members' statements for this morning. I understand the Leader of the Opposition has a point of order. Mr. Speaker, yes, thank you. Speaker, I seek unanimous consent to move a motion regarding the immediate passage of Bill 248, the COVID-19 Public Inquiry Act, to make sure Ontarians get the answers and accountability that they deserve, and that we take the steps necessary to protect us from future pandemics. Is the opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to move a motion regarding the immediate passage of Bill 248, the COVID-19 Public Inquiry Act. Agreed? No. I heard a no. Clear the opposition has another point of order. Uh, thank you, Speaker. Uh, I move. Uh, I seek rather unanimous consent for the House to observe a moment of silence for the 266 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since May 19th. Leader of the Opposition is seeking the unanimous consent of the House to observe a moment of silence for the 266 Ontarians who have succumbed to COVID-19 since May the 19th. Agreed? Agreed. Agreed. Members will please rise. Thank you very much. Members will please take their seats.